Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katrina and this is... I am doing the B tag that was originally done by Jim's Books, Reading and Stuff. And thanks to Jim for providing us with content ideas. Love it. The first prompt for this tag is Bildung's Roman. Uh, do you have a favorite Bildung's Roman or coming of age story? So currently I am reading Maya and the Rising Dark by Rena Barron to my daughter. I'm enjoying it just as much as her. It's a middle grade fantasy. Uh, Maya is this little girl who she reads these comic books about Orishas and she thinks they're just comics. Um, then she finds out that her father is actually an Orisha and she's a half godling. He goes missing. He gets taken by uh, the Lord of the Shadows. Um, and there's also tears in this veil between two worlds. The gateway to, you know, the other side is actually in a broom closet in co at Comic-Con. It's a wonderful story. The second one comes out in September this year. So that will be great. I just I love everything about this book the power that goes through these kids the the representation but there's also differences like there's light-skinned kids dark-skinned kids boys girls nerds they're all different kinds of nerds actually you know Frankie is like a science nerd Eli is the humor you know humorous kid of the group Maya likes comic books and all things you know comics and then she um, does like this stick uh, fighting with her dad and it turns out to be really important um, it's surprising and it actually you know it, it's really energetic and my daughter laughs when Eli says something silly she goes no 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 don't go in there or don't go do that because Maya's quite rash and Emerson knows that you know some of the things that Maya is running to do she shouldn't do but we also understand you know it's because her father's gone missing so it's a it's a fun time and um, this little girl is coming of age in a sense of learning who she is learning about the real world around her learning about her power and we can still transfer that onto ourselves as a tween you know there was so much change when I turned 12 so many things changed for me that is my was my true coming of age. I remember seeing people a certain way for the first time and not believing certain things, questioning certain things a lot more at the age of 12. And so that's, I really think 12 is a pivotal year. I think tweens, middle grade, 12 year old, I think that's such a pivotal time. And that's my favorite coming of age story currently. Number two, B is for beach. Be careful how you pronounce it. I think that's funny. Would you? What would you recommend for a beach read? I would say the, a beach read needs to be kind of light and frothy, um, light in actual like, you know, you don't want to kind of be carrying a big, heavy, thick book or something like that. You don't want to be reading, you know, War and Peace on the beach. So the last two books that were like that for me was Make My Magic by Shanna Swindon and Driving Mr. Dead. Um, Make My Magic was this about this girl who got stood up at the author at the altar and she decides to go ahead and take her honeymoon by herself. She runs into this old socialite and the lady gives her this like over the top necklace after spending the afternoon with her and come to find out it's a magical like necklace that imbues our main character with the power to be like the queen of the witches of New York and it becomes like this surprisingly fast-paced magical intrigue story overlaid with a fun romance as well and it was quick fun fast and surprisingly intricate as well I really enjoyed it second driving Miss Mr. Dead is a short novella in the series of Hollow Moon, Half Hollow Moon books that I'm reading by Molly Harper. Half Hollow Moon is a city in Kentucky that is populated by shifters and werewolves and vampires and witches. And 
the human population knows that they're there as well. Some of them are um, specious against them and some of them have just made businesses working with them. And the lady who is the main character in Driving Mr. Dead works for a company that and you know does daytime things for vampires and she needs to drive one of the vampires um, to a destination across country and he is carrying something that's really special and, and very worthwhile. Come to find out this guy is super particular and difficult but they and then they they continue to have like it's the most like unlucky road trip ever but through all of that they end up becoming lovers and it's cute and quick and who doesn't want to read about love on the beach? Number three is B is for best. What is the best book you have read this year so far? I would say Playing Nice by J.P. Delaney. That was a five star read that I read like in January and it has stayed on my mind since because it worked on so many levels. It was a great thriller, but then it also was so relatable to me personally because I went through uh, the more realistic version of what was going on in this more heightened thriller. Number four, B is for bookshop or bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? Amazon, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, I know, but I live in, I don't even live in a village. I live in, I think you, I think a hamlet is smaller than a village. And the closest city to us still only has a Walmart. Five, B is for banned books. Is there any book you think should be banned? No, I don't. I think that it's, it's when it comes to books, I think it's a slippery slope. When you start censoring books, um, it's my job as a parent to kind of know what my kids are reading and what they're doing, you know. There are books that, like, I know that, like, The Bluest Eye is was a banned book at one point, and that's an important book. It's, and it's my job to read that book first, and that's another reason why I read so many middle grade books, is because uh, I'm trying to get my kids to especially my daughter to kind of get out of the Harry Potter phase but I haven't even banned those books from her, from her because number one I think it's a slippery slope number two I think when you ban things it just makes it worse people want the thing more and so like with her like obviously I have an issue with JK Rowling but she doesn't understand that um, we have queer children and she is we she has queer siblings and she is the biggest hardest going champion for them but at the same time she loves her Harry Potter and she so I'm reading all of these middle class middle grade books and realizing how much I love them it's, it's become a, a, a great thing for me but I initially started reading them so that I could know what was in them and then if I love them like them whatever I thought she'd like them go ahead and get by the book put it on her shelf Be, and, and that's been my project to start getting her to kind of move to something else that I find less problematic, more representative of her, more up to date. Also, books can also spur along a conversation. The Midnight Library was a book like that for me. It was, in my opinion, it had a very uh, damaging message at the end, but I never, in, even in my in my conversation about the book, I never said don't read it. I just want to tell what I, my point of view about it as a person with severe mental illness and who has gone through the issues that the main character in that book has gone through. And I have experience with toxic positivity and I just talked it through and left it for the reader, the watcher of the video and then the reader to make their own decision. I didn't say you shouldn't read this book. I just said, I read this book, this is what was in it and this is what I thought as a person who actually deals with these things and as a person who has been told by psychiatry, psychiatrists and, and therapists 
these kinds of things the opposite of what this book is saying and, and the like so I instead of banning books instead of banning speech I think we should use it for conversation if it's being used in, in a good faith manner six is B is for Bible what is your favorite book of the Bible or what trigger warnings do you think it should have um, Psalm I love Psalm I love when I was much more religious and I was going through a lot of problems it was comforting to go through those those that poetry and I don't know if David was the one who actually wrote the book but if David was writing those books and just reading his stories and growing up and reading his stories and seeing how human he was and to know that he was still considered a man after God's heart um, after God's own heart and he was so flawed and, he, and you can see even in his his songs and his poetry and his prayers he would pray for people to be, to be <laughs> cast in hell and killed and stuff and it's such a human um, thing and for that you know if you I think that if you believe in the Bible as a inerrant kind of thing you can say well God allowed these prayers to be in there because he allows you to be human if you're like me and you just see it as a collection of literature I still think, you know, being culturally Christian and still believing that, that there is a higher power and needing, just knowing that the feelings that I have are ancient. You know, these, these the, the writer of this book was 3,000, 4,000 years ago maybe and has the exact same feelings that I have against people and in need of the same type of comfort. Um, this agrar agrarian shepherd person possibly is dealing with the same things as you know this a modern age person like myself that's comforting the King James version of like Psalms 23 it's it, it has a sort of a mantra comforting kind of thing to it so yeah I that's it and then I would say for Psalms in particular I would say trigger warning for violence violent speech seven b is for book shelves show me your bookshelf slash bookshelves i will insert some pictures of the i have books on like every surface in this room so i will take some images and, and put it in here so here's my dresser probably should do this there's some books there i have it's like a sort of TBR. I'm kind of picking books up from there. Have a few up here for decorative purposes. And here's a few on my bedside table. B is for, so this is number eight and it's the last prompt. B is for Brazil. Paulo Coelho's, Coelho's the Alchemist has been translated into 70 languages. Have you read any of his books? And if so, what do you think of them? I have not. That is the end of the tag. Anyone who is interested in doing this tag, please do so. And hmm, let's see, if you don't have any answers to the questions that you want to just like if you want to answer just one or two questions down in the inbox, that'd be great. If not, let's put let's put a wave for number two b is for beach yeah we'll put a wave as the emoji if you don't have anything to say but you still want to add to my algorithm be easy in yourself and i will see you in the next video bye